Still on World Cancer Day, being diagnosed with cervical cancer could be one of the most difficult moments of a woman's life. More troubling is losing your womb in the process. That's the story of a 48-year-old cervical cancer survivor and probably that of many women and those living with HIV whose risk is about 6 to 10 times higher. Sarah Apenko has more in this report. Meet Rita, not her real name. A 48-year-old cervical cancer survivor who radiates health and optimism despite the harrowing journey she has endured. She received her diagnosis in 2019 after enduring six months of persistent bleeding, a sign of the silent battle raging within. It wasn't easy. I was through my name. I not clot cram. not to me. The cost of treatment was not just financial. Rita had to sacrifice her womb, adding another layer to the emotional toll she bore. I a specialist. Have you given birth? And I'm saying, I have two children. I said, then I'll remove your womb. I say, even if I don't have a child and you want to remove my womb for me to be okay, 2019, the money I can recognize, almost 30,000. This one is the surgery. We have not gone to the chemotherapy owner. The widow, aside from grappling with cervical cancer, also has to deal with community stigma. My own church members, some of them, they see me, they look at me some way. So it got to a time I didn't go to the church. Sometimes they see you, they talk to you, they want to, you to see that they are talking about you. The stigma was so much that I, I stopped even going to church. The 2022 World Health Organization Global Cancer Observatory Report reveals cervical uterine cancer as the most common cancer among women. It ranks as the third leading cause of death claiming nearly 2,000 lives annually in Ghana. For women living with HIV, the stakes are even higher, necessitating yearly screenings to enhance their chances of survival. I can't say that we have been doing it as routinely as it should be done, so we need to get more women to, to screen. Despite the urgent need for effective strategies, Ghana is grappling with limited success, hampered by insufficient data and a lack of clear policy direction. We need to pay attention to the fact that despite treatment, people still come with advanced HIV disease and part of the conditions could be cervical cancer. And because we've not put in a, a system to track it, we are missing them. So they are, it's a missed opportunity. Pap smear screening costs vary across facilities. The pap smear is not covered by the National Health Insurance Scheme. Currently, Ghana lacks a national program for cervical cancer screening. The number of women who have been screened for cervical cancer is quite low and we think that it's time we start a conversation to have a national program for prevention of cervical cancer. Meanwhile, the ISEV GH project spearheaded by the Noguchi Memorial Institute and the government is seeking to integrate cervical cancer screening into routine care for those living with HIV. In a lot of places, uh, women living with HIV are screened every year or two for cervical cancer. But in Ghana, at the moment, we don't have a national program for screening for anybody. So even if we don't have a program, we should at least have a program for screening for people living with HIV since their risk is much, much higher. The agony and struggles faced by women with cervical cancer are indescribable, especially for those who tragically lose their lives to it. Yet, there is hope for change, and this can be a thing of the past. Sarah Pinkro, TV3 News, Accra.